Hi, this is Larry Chorton, and this is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar entitled Cool New Utilities for Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I want to talk about how to convert Final Cut 7 projects into Final Cut 10 using 7 to X. Let's start by converting Final Cut 7 projects to Final Cut 10. We use a utility called 7 to X, published by Intelligent Assistant. That's intelligentassistance.com. It's available in the App Store. It's $9.99. What it does is it converts projects and media exported from Final Cut Pro 7 into files that can be imported into Final Cut Pro 10. Now, what you need to know is that you must be able to open your Final Cut 7 project in Final Cut 7 in order to export it as an XML file. XML is critical. You can't simply open a Final Cut 7 project in this utility. You've got to open your project in Final Cut 7, then export it as XML. I'll show you how in a second. Media edits, transitions, and audio settings generally transfer OK. Effects, including color correction and clip retiming, generally don't transfer. And all your files open as an event with the project contained inside the event as a compound clip. So let's see how this works. Here's a Final Cut 7 project. In fact, it's a project we're going to be working with a lot today. It has three tracks of video. I've got the interview here. I've got B-roll across here. I have opening titles and closing titles. I've got sync sound. I've got sound effects and whooshes. I've got music. I've got 11 tracks of audio, 3 tracks of video. The way we want to export this so that Final Cut 10 can read it is the same way that you're going to get any XML file out of Final Cut 7. You select the project that you want to export. In this case, we select the sequence that we want to export. Go up to File. Go down to Export at the very bottom. It says Export XML. Now, we could export directly out of the timeline, but I found it more reliable and more accurate to export by selecting the sequence in the browser first, then exporting from the browser. When I select XML, it opens up the Export XML dialog, and you always export to support the highest version, in this case, version 5. If you want to include clips that are not part of this sequence, then you include master clips outside selection. But I just want to export this particular sequence and just the clips inside that sequence, so I'm not going to check it. This bottom checkbox should always be checked. Save project with latest clip metadata. In fact, I can't think of a single reason why you would not check it. Apple really didn't need to put it into this dialog at all. It should always be done. So when I'm exporting a specific project, this is how I have my checkboxes set. Watch how long this takes. I click OK. It says, what are you going to call it? I'm going to call this, let's call this surf dash approved. You can call it anything you want. There's no magic to the file name. And I'm going to save it to the desktop. Normally I would save this to say an XML folder on my second drive. But because this file is going to last only long enough for this demo to occur, I'm going to keep it to the desktop so I can find it to make it easy to delete. When you click Save, done. Half a second. It's finished. We're done with Final Cut, so I'm going to quit out and open up the utilities that we're going to be working with today. The first one is 7 to 10 for Final Cut Pro. Double click it, and it says, where's the XML file you want to convert? Well, there it is. It's called Surf Approved. I'm going to select it, click Open, and it says, do you want to send this to Final Cut Pro 10, or do you want to save it as an XML file? Well, currently, Final Cut 10 is not running. If Final Cut 10 were running, it would automatically send it without you having to do anything. In this case, because I want to show you the procedure, I'm going to save this as an XML file and click OK. It says, where do you want to save it? I happen to have a folder that I've created called Samples. You could save it to the desktop. You could create your own folder. There's no magic to the folder. There's no magic to the folder name. Notice that it gives us the name of the sequence as we exported it and appends 7 to X, meaning it's been converted. The conversion process is lightning quick. So now we're done. We've got our file converted here. Well, let's quit out of a few things. Let's see, we don't need 7 to 10, and we do need Final Cut 10, so we'll get that started up. 
Imagine, if you will, that music is playing and people are talking and Final Cut 10 is starting up. To start with, we're going to select a drive. We want this event stored on. With the drive selected, go up to File. Don't create a new event. We're going to do that all automatically. Go down to Import and select XML. It says, what XML do you want? Well, I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to go to my Samples folder. There's that converted XML file. Click OK. And that quickly, it adds a new sequence called Surf Approved. Remember, that's what it was called on the desktop. Right there, Surf-Approved. So it adds that new file, Surf Approved. And inside it are the sequences. And there are the clips. Now, what you might think should happen is that this would create a new project. But what happens instead is it creates a connected clip. See that little symbol for a connected clip? Double-click it to open it up into the timeline. And there are all of the clips that we have from Final Cut 7. Everything is in place. Our B-roll, our interviews, everything. Except, notice what's happened to the text. The text has come in. I've got the interplanetary internet. But it's lost its formatting. So the content is correct, but the formatting is not. Look here, this text in the center, courtesy NASA, was in the top right corner. Now it's lost its formatting. It's gone to a default font. In all cases where I've applied a drop shadow to the text in Final Cut by clicking the drop shadow setting in the motion tab, it's added the drop shadow effect, which is not necessary for text inside Final Cut 10. My transitions made it. My clips made it, my media made it, all of my edits are correct, but the effects are going to need some tweaking. So what this is really useful for is you want to retain your cut, but now you're going to have to redo the effects. Why? Because the effects engine in Final Cut 7 and the effects engine in Final Cut 10 are different. This is exactly the same result if you used Automatic Duck to go to Avid. Your cuts and media would make it, but your effects would not. If you use Final Cut 7 XML to go to Premiere, your cuts, your media transitions will make it, but clip retiming and effects won't. So this is not out of the ordinary for moving files from one piece of software to the next. This is why you would do this as a one-time only make the conversion and then fix your files and add the effects, which is exactly what I did here. Oh, by the way, as a connected clip, what you do is you select all of your clips, copy them, edit, copy, then go back to the project library, select the drive, create a new project. We'll just call this new project. And with the new project open, paste it in, and there's all your clips. So it's easy to move clips from a connected clip in the event browser into a project inside the timeline. Just simply use copy-paste. This has been an excerpt of a recent power-up webinar entitled Cool New Utilities for Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store and look for Webinar 108. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for one low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 600 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers both Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Thanks.